Vitamin D, there is a log. I was taking notes. I always study a lot before these shows. I want to bring you guys the most up-to-date information. I have about five pages of things that vitamin D is good for. Five, five full pages of taking notes. And that's probably even just the tip of the iceberg. Vitamin D, I know a lot of people think, oh yeah, we need vitamin D for our immune system. Yeah, you absolutely do. But that is nowhere near the only thing that it does. So I will convince you by the end of today that not only is it important to consistently check your vitamin D levels, but to also make sure you have the optimal, not standard, optimal to make sure you're preventing all kinds of disease and really helping proper function of literally every single cell in your body. There are receptors for vitamin D on every cell of your body, which means it impacts function of everything. There's very few functions that aren't dependent on in some way, shape or form on vitamin D. But the biggest shocker that a lot of people don't understand is the named vitamin D, when in fact, it's actually a hormone. It is a hormone primarily produced in the kidneys when it's made inside your body, but it's also called the sunshine vitamin because the way it works is when we get rays from the sun, mostly the UVB rays are the ones that are activating. When those UVB rays hit our skin, it actually converts your cholesterol to vitamin D. So you make some of it in the body, but we also get a lot of it converted from exposure to sunshine. And lots of research showing the farther people are away from the equator, the less sun they get in their regions that they live, the more we're getting these diseases and autoimmune conditions and cancers and seasonal affective disorder and all of these things because we're not getting that conversion to vitamin D. So if you, especially if you don't get a lot of natural sunlight, it really is important to make sure you're supplementing because there's not a whole lot of food, some fatty fishes, and there's a couple of them, but there's not a lot of foods you're going to get vitamin D from. So really your choices are direct sunlight exposure or supplementation, but there are proper ways to supplement and there are terrible ways to supplement. So I'm also going to walk you guys through that today. So you're very clear on exactly what you need to do. But lesson number one, vitamin D is not in fact a vitamin, it's a hormone, which in my opinion, because I love women's health, makes it extra important for women. We need that hormone to support our endocrine system, our reproductive system, our ovaries, our uterus, our thyroid. Vitamin D really is very protective to all of those systems. So especially for women, it's important that we get proper amounts. So let's talk about what a proper amount is. The standard ranges, like if you were to go and get your blood draw, the standard range says your vitamin D should be over 30. Under 30 is deficient, but if you're a 31 to 32, they're going to say, yep, that's great. And most medical doctors continue to abide by those standards that as long as it's 30, you're sufficient, right? That's not quite true. Now, where these were made in the very beginning, these standards and these ranges is the disease that's best known for vitamin D deficiency is called rickets. That softening of the bone, that's people with like bowed legs. That is a true vitamin D deficiency. And they find that people are getting that type of a condition if their vitamin D was under 30. So the kind of recommended standard was, well, as long as we can keep vitamin D over 30, we're not gonna have people with really you know, intense bone softening, developing rickets. And we just kind of stayed there. Even though there are thousands and thousands of studies, if you go to PubMed and search vitamin D, I think it's upwards of like 65 thousand studies on vitamin D and the benefits it has far and above just bone health. And most of those studies are showing it takes more than just that standard 30 nanograms per milliliter in your bloodstream to keep you healthy. So in our holistic opinion, and what most of the research supports is that 30 is no longer the number. So then you look at still a more kind of traditional medically based system, the vitamin D council, and they say 40. So they've taken it from 30 and they bump it up to 40, which I suppose is better, but still when we're looking at real function, and actually if you do the math, I was actually watching another doctor do this math and it was interesting, when you convert the amount of vitamin D someone needs to supplement with to actually get to the right numbers, and I'll teach you that in just a second, it's actually way more than even I have been recommending up to this point. So I've adjusted my opinion over the last 24 hours as I was studying more for you guys based truly on physiologically, how much does it take in our system to get to the right level? So I found that interesting and I'll teach you that in just a second. But what most of the holistic standards come to now 
is that the ideal number when you check your vitamin D on blood should be 60, not 30, not 40, but 60. And most people will say between 60 and 80. Now we also don't want it too high, right? Sometimes people over supplement and get really obsessive about this and their numbers are over hundred. That's not great either, but 60 to 80. So most of what we'll talk about today, let's use that 60 number. And then knowing that we probably want to get a little bit higher. So the research or the, the math that this doctor was doing when I was watching the, uh, his just informational video, he was saying that when you look at how we measure vitamin D in the bloodstream, it uses one unit of measurement versus when we supplement, it uses something called IUs, right? If you're asking how many, how much vitamin D should I take? That metric is in IUs, international units. Yet that's not the same as when we measure our blood. When you get your blood work back, it's going to have it in nanograms per milliliter. So they're not the same units. So he was actually doing the conversion to figure out how many I use does it take to get 60 nanograms per milliliter in your blood, which this is the first time I've actually ever seen someone do this. I thought it was fascinating. And what all the calculations came down to was that if you are 30 or under, it is going to take you 10,000 IUs per day for three to four months to get back up to 60. If you are slightly over 30, between 30 and 40, it's going to take you 5,000 IUs of vitamin D for about three to four months to get back up to that 60 level. So based on how low your vitamin D is on your labs, you also want to be choosing the amount that you're supplementing. And a lot of vitamin Ds, if you turn them over, you're only getting 1,000, sometimes 2,000 you would need to take that for a very long time. And in fact, you're probably not absorbing all of it anyways. That lower amount will probably never get you to that 60 number that we're looking for. So making sure, especially if your numbers are very low, that you're doing enough dosing for a period of time and then you're retesting. That is so important. You're retesting because your doses should be based on your levels, not on a standard recommendation because not everyone even absorbs it the same, right? If you have inflammation or gut issues, or if you don't have a gallbladder, you're not going to absorb as much as somebody else, which means you'll probably have to take more for longer, but we always want to check the labs. I like to check them, start supplementation, check them again in 90 days, and then make a new decision based on where that number is. But the likelihood for most of you guys watching is to get your number up, your 5,000 to 10,000 I use for a couple of months to get it where it needs to be. Now let's talk about, well, my doctor put me on a prescription of vitamin D, or I'm taking 50,000 I use to get my numbers back up. And that has become the popular thing, mainly because we know how important it is. And doctors know that they want to get those numbers up quickly. And not that I'm fully opposed to the higher dose of vitamin D, but I've seen this over and over again. You will recheck those numbers and they will have just gone up slightly, even taking a mega dose where consistent lower doses daily are going to get you where you want faster because you're actually allowing your body to absorb it. You're allowing your body to assimilate it and then you're giving it more the next day instead of these really high doses that number one, you're probably only absorbing about 60% of it anyways. And then your body doesn't know what to do with that much at one time. So you end up excreting more of it than if you would have just taken like a 10,000 IU daily instead of that 50,000 once a week or whatever they've prescribed for you. So if you're currently doing that, that's okay, but make sure you're checking your numbers. And if they're not going up quick enough, I would switch over and make sure that you're doing a good quality vitamin D. We'll talk about that. Um, but I actually do prefer to do it daily instead of the mega doses. In addition to that, it is shocking to me that some of these prescription vitamins are still vitamin D, not even vitamin D or D2, not D3, where all the research shows it's D3 that really helps, but a lot of these prescriptions are the synthetic version of vitamin D, so you're likely not absorbing it and getting all the benefits we're about to talk about from a synthetic version. So the way you know this, and there's big long names for it, but I like to make it really simple, the true form of vitamin D3 starts with the word coli with a C, coli with a C. So the good vitamin D starts with the letter C. The synthetic form of vitamin D starts with the word ergo with an E. So if it starts with the letter C, you're getting the right type. If it starts with the letter E, you're getting the synthetic version. So making sure you're checking those things because it makes a very big difference in the actual health benefit 
you're getting from supplementation. So if you're doing the high dose, make sure it's at least the right kind. Um, I do suggest doing daily instead of weekly and doing lower doses every day. But if you're currently doing that, keep it up. Just make sure you're testing to make sure it's doing what you want it to do. And then we all are starting to hear more and more about making sure if you're taking vitamin D, especially higher doses of vitamin D, it has to be combined with not only K2, that's been the more research. So K2 allows your body to make sure that the vitamin D isn't getting stuck in the tissues because, and the calcium that it does, it helps transport calcium through the bloodstream. That's how vitamin D helps your bones, helps your teeth, is the vitamin D helps get the calcium into the bones. It drives it in there. But the K2 allows it to make sure that that calcium isn't getting deposited in the arteries, in the kidneys, and other tissues where it could create damage or possibly even stroke. So just too much vitamin D carrying too much calcium without the help of K2 could be problematic. So you want to be very careful that you're making sure you're combining K2. And then I also suggest you combine K1. A lot of vitamin Ds don't have both K2 and K1, but K1 helps healthy blood flow. And if you're asking your body to carry a lot of vitamin D and a lot of calcium and a lot of vitamin K2 through the blood, you wanna make sure you have really healthy blood flow and K1 will help support that as well. So my ideal supplementation for vitamin D is that it is a vitamin D3 in its true non-synthetic form, that it is paired with both K1 and K2, and you're taking at least 5,000 IUs, maybe up to 10, depending on what your blood labs look like, and then you're retesting in 90 days, and then you can modify your dosing from there. So that's the standard kind of crash course on vitamin D. Um, I do have my absolute preferred vitamin D that is a 5,000 IU capsule paired with K1 and K2, fat absorbable to make it really bioavailable for you. I will drop that link below. It is by far my favorite one. And this is what I use and my entire family uses. So I will drop that link below. If you have a vitamin D that you're using and you have questions about it, feel free to take a picture of the label. And when I say label, I don't have my vitamin D in front of me. I should have, but you turn it over and I want to see like the actual, like this many I use of this, what it has in with it. But I also want to see the bottom where it says other ingredients, because here's what I find a lot in vitamin D. And I'm not gonna name names of supplements, but if you're getting it at Walmart, if you're getting it at Costco, if you're getting it at these big stores, this is probably what's happening, is these vitamin D capsules, when you take them out, they look very pretty. They're almost like gold in color, right? They make them kind of shiny and pretty. And when you flip it over, you'll have to look at, yes, how much D3 is in there? Does it have K1 and K2? But in other ingredients, the crazy thing that they do is they start adding colors and dyes to your vitamin D. So a lot of times you'll see caramel color to make it that gold cut type of a color. Um, sometimes you'll see FD and C, which is food dye and color number X, Y, and Z. And they also put it in with inflammatory oils. Now, this is something you really want to be careful of because vitamin D is fat soluble. So it does require fat to get into your system, but it requires a healthy fat or else you're just allowing the vitamin D to open up your cell and flood it with all of this inflammatory fat if you're not getting the right kind. So unfortunately, a lot of lower grade vitamin Ds are mixed with cottonseed oil, corn oil, soybean oil, things that are actually very inflammatory and known to cause the opposite things that we're looking for with your vitamin D. So I always say, not only do you need a good quality supplement, you can't ruin it with things that are negating the benefit that you're getting. So that other ingredients list, you have to make sure there's no dyes, there's no colors, there's no added sugars. For some reason, even in a capsule, they add things like sucralose, which is an artificial sugar. Maltodextrin is in a lot of these. Those are two words I want you to look out for. If there's any colors, dyes, synthetics, or if there's any inflammatory oils, you are not taking the right form of vitamin D. And in fact, you're probably not even getting the benefit that you're hoping for. It would be in your favor to switch that to something that's actually going to work especially because vitamin D is so stinking important. So if you have questions about yours, take a picture of it and post it in the comments and I'll come back and I'll look through it and I'll tell you what's good about it. If there's something that's problematic about it, I would love to share that information with you guys. So feel free to post those and I'll come back and review them for you. Okay, so that was Crash Course. I'm gonna check real quick if there's any comments. Um, 
now let's get into some of the surprising benefits. Yeah, often I can answer some of the specific vitamin D questions here when I'm done. Okay, so I'm gonna bring out my big old list. I don't wanna miss anything, but I'm gonna go through these quickly because a lot of it is just stuff I want you to be aware of, right? If you are still not an avid believer that you need optimal vitamin D levels, which we discussed as 60 or 60 to 80, let's call it the ideal, um, here are some of the bigger reasons why. So yes, we know immune system function. Two, we know that there's a decreased risk of cancers, several different types of cancers when we have optimal vitamin D levels. That's huge. But did you know, let's go through this and you can tell me yes or no. Did you know these? If anything comes up that you're really surprised about, tell me. I'm going to start from the top. I'm going to work from the bottom. Brain health, vitamin D and brain health. There are a lot of research studies. Again, go on PubMed, search brain health and Alzheimer's, brain health and dementia, brain health and Parkinson's, um, vitamin D and dementia, all these things together. And you're gonna see consistently people who develop these cognitive decline type of situations have deficient vitamin D. And that is not a coincidence, right? The brain health issue did not cause the deficiency a deficiency over time. We haven't had the good fats and it helps protect the synopses where your brain fires. If you don't have that over enough years, you're going to start to have poor function in that area. So vitamin D has a ton to do with brain health, including brain fog and mood, right? There is a big connection between low vitamin D levels and depression and anxiety. And if you're trying all these other, even natural herbs for your mood and for your anxiety, but you're still deficient in vitamin D, you might not feel that big breakthrough that you're looking for because we need optimal levels of vitamin D for brain health and for mood health. So that's interesting. Number two, hair. Everyone always asks me about hair. Now I have some of my other favorites, right? We want good antioxidants. We need to make sure our ferritin levels are high. I have an entire 30 minute video on hair, but vitamin D for quality of hair. So if your hair is brittle or dry, vitamin D helps with that. Um, I just, again, this, this week when I was researching for this, there was multiple people who mentioned it could even slow down graying of your hair. That was the first time I'd really heard that in context with vitamin D as well. Um, so I'm not positive if that's 100% true or not, but it's worth a try, right? Less grays if you have optimal vitamin D levels, quality of hair, texture of hair, and it does also impact thinning of hair in some capacity as well. But really your main things are the texture and the quality of your hair for it to be silky and shiny and soft, adequate vitamin D levels are necessary for that. So we have brain health, we have our hair, we have our skin, especially if you have skin issues like psoriasis, eczema and acne, you need vitamin D. Remember vitamin D converts cholesterol in our skin or the sun converts the cholesterol which becomes vitamin D, which is very healing to your skin. We need that vitamin D both from the actual exposure of the sun and from supplementation to make sure we're getting optimal levels, but especially in kids, just optimizing vitamin D levels with the proper quality vitamin D. Again, if you're giving your kid a kid's version and it's full of sugars and dyes, I always cringe at every supplement that's a kid version just means they added crap to it for it to taste better. And we're wondering why it doesn't work for our children. My kids get the same supplements that I take. Rarely do they get a kid version. They just get a lower dose of what I take because I don't want it filled with sugars and dyes just to make it look pretty and taste better. So if you have children with skin issues, make sure you're optimizing their vitamin D levels with a good quality vitamin D supplementation. That for me has been huge. Again, my story, I had psoriasis, forever all over my body. And consistently until I was almost 30, I had low vitamin D levels. Once I figured out why my vitamin D was low for me, it was an Epstein-Barr infection. I started optimizing my levels, made some other changes, but my skin's completely cleared up and it's never come back again. And my vitamin D levels are finally optimal. Again, not a coincidence when the body is in a good place, skin will be in a good place. Whatever is happening outside is an external representation of an internal problem. Let me repeat that because some of you guys are so frustrated with your skin or your hair or all these external things. Your external problems are from the inside always, every time. No topical cream, no different shampoo. That's not going to be the answer. The answer is balancing your immune system, your microbiome, optimizing your vitamin levels, 
And then your external appearance will reflect the work you did on the inside. So I highly, highly suggest if you or your children have skin issues, really dive deep into what's causing that to make sure that we're regulating any of those situations. So skin, vitamin D and skin, vitamin D and sinuses for two reasons. One, allergies, optimal level of vitamin D. People have been shown that when you have optimal levels of vitamin D, your reaction to allergens decreases significantly. So if you get seasonal allergies, just making sure your vitamin D levels are high enough could help minimize the reactions you're getting in the seasons. But vitamin D is also antiviral. I'm going to talk about this in two fold right now. So it's antiviral. So it helps sinus infections prevent and treat sinus infections. But vitamin D is also known to be able to deactivate viruses as well as stopping viruses from reactivating. In fact, in several different research studies, they say if you're getting exposed to a virus, let's say you go somewhere and someone has the flu and you're exposed to it. If you take 50,000 IUs of vitamin D three days in a row, it can deactivate 70% of viruses. Three days in a row, 50,000 IUs right after exposure, it can deactivate it before it takes root in your cells. That's fascinating. We just don't think to do it, right? You get exposed, you might take five or 10,000 IUs and think that's good, but really doing a mega dose for three days, right? You wouldn't do that long-term, but to be able to really open up that viral capsid and deactivate that virus before it becomes a full-blown infection, that is tremendous beneficial information for you. And that could work for any viruses, right? Epstein-Barr virus, herpes viruses, the flu, COVID, whatever it is, if we can get on top of things quickly, right? That's the difference and be able to deactivate it, high doses of vitamin D alone can do that, which is so cool. So keep that in mind next time you're exposed to something, you feel like you're coming down with something, high doses of vitamin D three days in a row can really help minimize your exposure or your reaction to those viruses. We know that vitamin D is good for the immune system, but one of the reasons is because it has a large activity on our thymus, which is where a lot of our B cells and T cells and immune system is activated. Your thymus lives kind of here in the middle of your chest, underneath your thyroid, you have your thymus. They are different things and they have different jobs, but your thymus is really your immune system powerhouse and vitamin D helps it work effectively as well as preserves the tissue of your thymus. It stops it from shrinking, which can happen with age, stress, inflammation, which makes our immune systems weaker. So consistently, Optimal levels of vitamin D helps preserve that thymus, which is so beneficial for all immune functions, but particularly autoimmune issues, right? Optimal vitamin D levels are imperative if you have an autoimmune condition. And most people who have an autoimmune issue actually find it really hard to maintain optimal vitamin D levels. So tell me if this is you, that you'll go one time and it's good, then you go the next time and it's tanked, and then you'll go back and it's okay, and then it's super low again, and you didn't really change a whole lot, but your vitamin D levels bounce around. That is really typical of an autoimmune issue. The reason being, because whatever caused your autoimmune issue, remember, your autoimmune disease is not your body attacking itself. It is your body attacking something, and you need to find what that something is, for example, is it a bacterial infection? Is it H. pylori? Is it mold? Is it uh, Epstein-Barr virus? So those are the main triggers of autoimmune disease. But when you have those triggers active in the body, let's say you have Epstein-Barr virus that you don't know about, it's running rampant, it's caused your Hashimoto's and you don't know it's there. Well, that active virus is going to keep depleting your vitamin D. You're going to supplement, it's going to go back down. You're going to supplement, it's going to go back down. You're going to supplement, it's going to go back down because the thing, right, the cause, the root cause is still there, which is that Epstein-Barr virus or that bacterial infection or that mold exposure or for you, whatever your root cause is, until you take care of that cause, it's going to be really hard to optimize your levels. So if you are a person like that and your levels are bouncing around all over the place, I highly recommend you dig deeper and figure out what's still draining that vitamin D level. So just keep that in mind as you watch what your levels look like as you test consistently over this next year, now that you know better. Uh, thyroid, thyroid function in general, again, it's a hormone. Our hormones and our thyroid are directly connected and they do all kinds of jobs together. So thyroid function, but also the number one cause of hypothyroid is Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune issue. So optimal vitamin D help both your actual thyroid function and the autoimmune piece of the puzzle. Imperative for that. Teeth, your actual strength and health of your teeth 
because they're bones, right? Vitamin D is well known to help strengthen bones, decrease your risk of osteoporosis and osteopenia, healthy, strong teeth. All of that is from not only vitamin D levels, but making sure that you're pairing it with that K2, that K1, so it can help get the calcium into your bones. Here's a very common misconception. Everyone thinks it's a calcium deficiency. Rarely is it that you're actually deficient in calcium because calcium is in a lot of different foods, right? It's in nuts, it's in meat, it's in lots of our leafy vegetables, it's in broccoli, it's in dairy if you're a dairy person. It's in so many foods. You are probably not calcium deficient. You are vitamin D and K2 and K1 deficient because those are the things that are required to actually get the calcium into your bones, right? So if you have a ton of calcium, but it's not getting actually driven into the bones, you're not going to see the benefit. So everyone assumes they're calcium deficient. My guess is your calcium's fine. Check your vitamin D, add the K1 and K2, and allow that calcium to actually go where we want it instead of just circulating and getting stuck in the tissues for both true bone health and for teeth. I mean, so many people have weak teeth, kids with cavities, um, really having like teeth breaking, having to replace teeth. That's huge vitamin D deficiency symptom. So make sure you're checking that and you're adding all the right things to get the calcium into your teeth. Lungs, especially asthma. Vitamin D really helps coat the lung lining. It helps protect those barriers of the lungs that can reduce asthma, that can reduce viral infections and pneumonia inside the lungs. So if you're someone who's prone to getting those types of infections, optimal levels of vitamin D can reduce your risk of that. Vitamin D helps with muscle, your muscle contraction, your muscle firing. It helps with your muscle recovery. If you're someone who has weak muscles or you always feel like it's harder for you to do things or you don't recover as quickly as other people, vitamin D deficiency. And remember, deficiency means under 60, not 30. If you are under 60, all of these things you are still at risk for. Optimizing your levels is very, very important. Your adrenal glands, one of my favorite things to talk about, right? If you've never heard me talk about the importance of testing your adrenal glands, it is the thing I believe in the most for women. Every woman needs to properly test for adrenal glands, but vitamin D and cortisol, which is your stress hormone, have an inverse relationship. The more cortisol, which is stress hormone, your body is using, the less vitamin D you're going to have because cortisol is inflammatory. Cortisol causes a stress response. Both of those things will start draining your vitamin D and it will go down faster. So just being able to support your adrenal glands and keep those steady, you'll be able to optimize your vitamin D levels easier than if you have crazy inflamed adrenals and you're trying to take a bunch of vitamin D, they might not be able to balance each other out. You've really got to make sure you're working on both at the same time time, right? And to be clear about that too, just taking a bunch of vitamin D, but leaving all of these other imbalances is also not the answer, right? Go ahead and supplement with vitamin D. I want you to watch your levels, but make sure you're not taking a supplement to suppress a symptom just to see that your labs look better, but you're not really taking care of the cause, right? If you have stressed adrenals, if you have an autoimmune issue, if you have infections in your body, if you have tons of inflammation, if you're eating bad food, just taking a vitamin D isn't going to be the magic bullet, but it will be incredibly supportive and important, a good tool in your healing, but you've got to make sure you're looking for those other causes, deep root causes to get well-balanced optimal levels. So adrenals are huge for that. Test your adrenals. That's like my public service announcement every week. Test your adrenal glands. Um, pancreas, we know a lot about vitamin D in the pancreas, um, the islet of Langerhans cells where we make our insulin, which helps with blood sugar regulation, type one and type two diabetes. We know that all of these different conditions and pancreatic issues are supported and helped with optimal levels of vitamin D. Remember, I keep saying optimal levels, not just taking a crappy poor quality vitamin D, a thousand I use a day, optimal levels of quality vitamin D. Heart, so much heart protective benefit of vitamin D, strokes, heart attacks, heart disease, heart inflammation, all of those things can be supported by vitamin D because it's incredibly anti-inflammatory. Not only is it good for our immune system, not only is it a hormone, not only does it have all these functions, vitamin D on its own is anti-inflammatory, which makes it great for cardiac issues, but also joint pain, arthritis, inflammatory arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, because that's an autoimmune issue. Um, vitamin D helps lubricate our joints to reduce inflammatory arthritis in our joints. So if you have arthritis and if you suffer from arthritis pain, 
Vitamin D in the right doses can also be an analgesic, which means it can help calm pain, take away discomfort. So if you have joint issues, vitamin D is such a simple and very cost-effective way to start helping those different issues. So inflammation in general, but especially for heart and joints and does help reduce pain when we have optimum vitamin D levels. Vitamin D is imperative for gut function, not only from an immune standpoint, but to make sure the integrity of your gut lining is good. It helps lubricate that as well. So vitamin D levels can help with constipation. There's unlimited benefits for optimum vitamin D and your gut health, which is huge. Um, we already talked a little bit about cancer and then reproductive health. Some things that are really interesting is doing a kind of therapeutic dose of vitamin D, which would be about 10,000 IUs has been shown to help reduce the size of fibroids and women with fibroids. It helps reduce the amount of inflammation for women with endometriosis. It's been known to help several different reproductive cancers, and it does also help optimize your cycle length. So to get that good, you know, we always say it's probably between 25 and 34 days of cycle. If you have really short cycles or really long cycles, optimum vitamin D levels can help bring your cycles back to a normal length just by optimizing your vitamin D. I mean, there's so many cool things. Like that was pages of things that we just hit on. And that's not even near everything that vitamin D does. So if you have not yet tested your levels, know what your levels are, and started a high quality supplementation for vitamin D. After today, I don't know what you're waiting for. <laughs> I don't know what more I can tell you to really stress the point that this is simple and easy. And people are always asking like, where can I start? Or maybe there's a financial issue. Vitamin D is also probably one of the most cost-effective supplements out there. It's not incredibly effective or uh, it's not incredibly, it's very effective. It's not expensive, but it's very effective. So bang for your buck, start there. Not only start there, but all of the free resources that we have coming up in the spring challenge, right? So if you are looking for somewhere to start, if you don't have a lot of money to spend on different supplements or different things or different testing, now's your chance you have a completely free 21 day challenge coming up. Even if you just simply add a vitamin D to that to help really get your energy up over these next couple of weeks as well. Those are wonderful places that anybody can start. And if you can't do the vitamin D, that's fine. Do the resources, do the free challenge, start somewhere and add a piece as you go. So if you guys are tuning in late, I'm gonna leave the replay up, um, but we have our 21 day, Spring Clean Your Body Challenge that starts on Monday, April 10th. So it starts right away this Monday. I'm going to drop the link below again so you guys can register for that. It is free. I do have some additional supplements I've recommended if you want to purchase those separately. They are not required, but they are wonderful additions to help magnify the results that you're going to get. But the core of the challenge is free. Meal plans and recipes, really easy 10-minute workouts, mindset tips and tools, hydration tools, lives. We're going to be in here multiple times a week, keeping you guys accountable and excited and really making sure you can follow through the whole 21 days. This is by far my favorite challenge that we offer. Everyone always loves it. Registration is open. We get started on Monday. Do not miss this. This is the place for you to start, start feeling better, feel good in your body, get energy coming into the spring. I have lots of really fun resources and things to share with you guys through the entire challenge. So if you are not registered yet, I'm going to drop the link below for you guys. Get registered. If you're ordering the supplement bundle that comes with it, try and get that ordered in the next day or two so you have it to start early in your challenge. And I'm so excited for all that to kick off with you guys on Monday. If you have questions about it, let me know. I'm going to come back and answer all of your vitamin D questions as soon as we get done. And then we'll be back next week with our topic is going to be intermittent fasting. Lots of questions. What's the right window for what type of person? Who's it good for? Who's it not good for? What's a safe way to do it? I'm going to hit all of those topics next week. So make sure you join back live and we'll go into detail on that. But I hope I blew your mind today with how many very important functions vitamin D has. Now you know how to take it, what the optimal levels are, what the best type of supplementation is. You have all of the information. Go and put it to use. It will benefit you tremendously. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see y'all next week.